Multiple myeloma is a proliferative disorder of plasma cells, a form of white blood cells that generate antibodies, and it is the second most common hematological malignancy behind non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In normal circumstances, B cells originate in the bone marrow from hematopoietic stem cells. The naive B cells will then migrate to lymphoid tissues like the spleen or lymph nodes, where they are activated by CD4 T cells, which causes them to develop into plasma blasts and eventually plasma cells that reside in the bone marrow and produce large quantities of antibodies. In multiple myeloma, there is uncontrolled replication of the plasma cells and secretion of the immunoglobulins or their components, termed monoclonal proteins. Any class of immunoglobulin can be produced, but most commonly it is IgG, followed by IgA. Of the cases producing these two immunoglobulins, 40% will also have free monoclonal light chains in the urine, called Bence jones protein. Rarely, there can be minimal production of proteins, known as non-secretory myeloma, although more recent serum assays have discovered monoclonal proteins in those previously determined to be non-secretory. Overall, multiple myeloma is part of a spectrum called plasma cell dyscrasias, ranging from monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance to plasma cell leukemia, where each stage can evolve into the next. MGUS is where monoclonal proteins are detected either in the serum or in the urine, but there are no signs or symptoms. It is present in 3% of people over the age of 50, and it progresses to multiple myeloma in around 1% of people per year. Smoldering myeloma is considered a pre-malignant disease, where there is production of a monoclonal protein but there are no myeloma-defining events, which we will cover in the diagnosis. For the first five years after diagnosis, there is a 10% chance per year of developing multiple myeloma, then 3% for the next five years, and 1% annually thereafter. Multiple myeloma is considered a cancer and has its own features that we will cover next, as well as the diagnostic criteria later on, and the most advanced form is plasma cell leukemia, affecting around 4% of those with multiple myeloma, although it does not have to progress through from other dyscrasias to be diagnosed. Initially, multiple myeloma may be asymptomatic, but over time features will develop, and the most common ones can be remembered with the criteria CRAB. C is for hypercalcemia, which occurs due to an interaction between bone microenvironment and the myeloma cells that causes increased osteoclast activity, which comes from cytokine secretion like rank L, which ultimately means more bone being resorbed and as part of that, calcium being released into the blood. Hypercalcemia itself then has its own presentation, such as renal stones, bone or abdominal pain, constipation or increased urinary frequency, muscle weakness, and altered mental status. R is for renal insufficiency, which can occur acutely or it can be chronic. The increased calcium levels can lead to nephrocalcinosis, meaning calcium being deposited within the kidney, causing dysfunction, and can also lead to renal stones, as we mentioned. The most common cause for renal insufficiency, however, is due to the monoclonal proteins being produced by the myeloma cells, leading to conditions such as cast nephropathy or light chain deposition disease. As a result of renal injury, electrolyte imbalances can then develop. A is for anemia, present in over 70% of patients, typically a normocytic anemia that occurs due to multiple factors including the infiltration of bone marrow by cancer cells, as well as inhibition of hematopoiesis by cytokines and impaired renal function. Because of the bone marrow infiltration, there may be low levels of all blood cell lines, called pancytopenia. Like the other CRAB criteria, anemia can itself cause symptoms, like shortness of breath, also known as dyspnea, fatigue, pallor and lightheadedness. B is for bone lesions, 
seen in between 55 and 70% of cases, which results from the activation of osteoclasts by rank L overproduction we mentioned earlier. These lesions are most commonly in the spine, skull and ribs, which is why back pain is commonly found in these patients, and multiple myeloma should be considered in those above 40 with persistent unexplained back pain, especially at night. These lesions can lead to pathological fractures and can lead to spinal root compression and therefore neurological symptoms like radiculopathies or even corda equina syndrome in some cases. Other possible features include fatigue seen in around 1 in 3 patients and weight loss present in nearly a quarter of patients. There can also be recurrent infections, particularly pneumonia and pyelonephritis. Several chromosomal abnormalities are found in multiple myeloma. Particularly common are translocations involving chromosome 14, which features the immunoglobulin heavy chain region that ultimately leads to uncontrolled replication of plasma cells and secretion of the monoclonal protein. Deletions of portions of chromosomes 13 and 10 are associated with a poor prognosis. The rates are slightly higher in males than in females, and the median age at diagnosis is approximately 70 years. African Americans are twice as commonly affected as Caucasians, and obesity and alcohol consumption are also thought to be risk factors. Exposure to chemicals, including through occupations like hairdressing or agriculture, is linked with development of multiple myeloma. The diagnosis may first be suspected based on overall clinical manifestations and lab tests, and confirmed when combined with serum or urine electrophoresis, a skeletal survey and bone marrow histology that meet the International Myeloma Working Group criteria. For a diagnosis of multiple myeloma, there needs to be more than 10% clonal bone marrow plasma cells or plasmacytomas, which are collections of cancerous plasma cells found on biopsy of bone or extramedullary tissue, and the presence of a myeloma-defining event. These include any of the CRAB criteria or any of these biochemical findings. Acutely, patients may require treatment of hypercalcemia through intravenous fluids and perhaps calcitonin or bisphosphonates. Renal function should be addressed as much as possible through correction of volume status and optimization of nephrotoxic agents. In cases where there is spinal involvement, patients may need radiotherapy or surgical intervention. As for managing the disease process itself, the aim is to alleviate symptoms induce remission and increase patient survival. More recently, the use of non-chemotherapy induction regimens that include dexamethasone, an immunomodulatory agent like thalidomide or lenalidomide, and a proteasome inhibitor like bortezomib or carfilzomib, are preferred over chemotherapeutic regimens including cyclophosphamide, vincristine and doxorubicin, although they are still options. Monoclonal antibodies, like daratumumab, directed against anti-CD38 cells are also options. Maintenance therapy is usually corticosteroids with thalidomide or lenalidomide and a proteasome inhibitor, particularly exazomib, which is an oral medication. Results from the non-chemotherapeutic agents may even be preferable to transplant, which are generally autologous stem cell transplants, where the stem cells come from the patient themselves. With these, 40% of patients go into complete remission, but the median duration is only two to three years. Allergenic stem cell transplants use stem cells from other donors and may increase disease-free survival in some cases, but is not commonly done due to a high rate of transplant-associated mortality. The majority of patients will eventually relapse following response to therapy which may be treated with similar regimes to initial therapy. However, later on in the course, it may not respond to the original therapy called relapsed refractory multiple myeloma, at which point different combinations of dexamethasone and immunomodulatory drugs, proteasome inhibitors, monoclonal antibodies, and other agents like selective inhibitor of nuclear export, also known as SINE, are tried. 
More recently, there are gene therapies that have been approved by the FDA, including Abecma and Caravicti, generally in patients who have had multiple prior therapies.